this is one that gets a lot of students um, for the portion. But I mean, guys, if you did the investigation, which I really hope you guys did, you will, um, I think question number three and four on the investigation really help prepare you for this problem. So if you didn't do the investigation or you didn't do questions number three and four, I recommend doing them before you guys do the homework on this. Because what I asked in investigation like three and four was just to evaluate functions. Like for instance, evaluate g of negative one. Because in algebra one you guys did this. In algebra two you guys did this. You just plug the number in and then you find the value. Negative one squared is one. One minus three is negative two. Right? And that's all you guys practice doing in Algebra 1. And then in Algebra 2, we said, hmm, you know what? Let's maybe give you guys some different numbers. Let's give you guys like, um, you know, negative x and see what happens. So now, or let's do this. Let's plug in like, let's plug in uh, 2a. Right? We said, oh, we can plug in more things than just numbers. Why don't we plug in an expression? So you plugged in 2a. And then you had to simplify it. So 2a squared is going to be 4a squared minus 3, right? So then my question to you is, you also did this in, in, and then my question to you is, well, then what if I plugged in f of x? And you'd say, well, if I'm following the pattern that you're doing, whatever you put in here, you put in for the input variable. So if you put in negative 1, I replace the x with the negative 1. If you put in 2a, I replace the x with the 2a. So if you want to put in f of x, then I'm just going to put the f of x in for that, for the, for, for the x input variable. Yes? Now, it looks kind of confusing. I'm not going to lie to you. But it follows the same pattern. And the cool thing about this is we actually have a defined value for f of x, don't we? We have a defined value for f of x, which is? Oh, wait. Am I doing this the wrong way? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, OK, I'm doing it. So I'm saying, oh, crap. All right, well, whatever. So you're going to plug in f of x. Oops, I meant to do that the wrong way. So that one's G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, but I didn't want to do, that's for this problem, though. So if I wanted to do, I don't know why, oh, I see what I did. So if I want to do f of g of x, then basically what I'm doing there is I'm just going to take my g of x function and plug it into my f, kind of un, 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 unlike this one. So I'll take g of x, which is square root of g of x, sorry, plus 1. So therefore, g of x here is x squared minus 3 plus 1, which I can simplify to x squared um, minus 2. Now, this is a little bit more of an advanced question. So if this one gets a little bit over your head, don't worry about it. All right. But when is x squared minus 2 going to be greater than 0? Well, guys, do we know what x squared minus 2 looks like? Could you find the x-intercepts of x squared minus 2? Oh, wait, is that supposed to be? Yeah. All right, guys, sorry, I picked a bad number. So this is going to be, all right, just x squared is equal to 2, square root, square root, x equals plus or minus square root of 2. Those are the x-intercepts. If you think about x squared minus 2, what's happening with it? That's a graph being shifted down two units to the left. Right? The x-intercepts are at negative square root of 2 and at positive square root of 2. Those are the x-intercepts. How do you find the x-intercepts? You solve, right? You set the equation equal to 0. Those are the x-intercepts. So you can see that this graph is greater than 0 to the left of negative square root of 2 and to the right of square root of 2. A little more advanced than I was planning on doing for this problem, but the domain here is negative infinity to negative square root of 2, union square root of 2 to infinity. Don't worry, guys. I'll, I'll deal with um, I meant to do something a little bit easier.